Hello everyone, I'm Rushali. I am a PhD candidate at University du Quebec at Trois-Rivières and I'm glad to be here today as a part of um, APN GCGC Symposium. Today I will be talking about a part of my project which is volatile profiling of cadaver dog training aids using comprehensive two-dimensional gas chromatography. A brief introduction. Following death, the process of decomposition commences. Decomposition is a postmodern process that involves disintegration of soft tissue and what we're left with is skeletal or dry remains. During the process of decomposition, biomacromolecules such as lipids, proteins and carbohydrates are broken down to simpler molecules such as hydrocarbons, oxygenated compounds, nitrogen containing compounds, sulfur containing compounds and so on and so forth. All of these compounds in their simplest form can exist as volatile organic compounds. Volatile organic compounds that are evolved during the process of decomposition can comprise an entire suit of classes of compounds including acids, alcohols, esters, ethers, aldehydes, ketones, cyclic compounds, aliphatic compounds, sulfur containing compounds and nitrogen containing compounds. This entire suit of VOC can also be known as decomposition order which is my field of interest. Amongst all of these classes of compounds, sulfur containing compounds have been repeatedly reported as the most significant one, of which dimethyl sulfide, dimethyl disulfide, and dimethyl trisulfide are considered significant. The volatile organic compounds that comprise the decomposition order can be analyzed in the laboratory using instrumentation. However, during field searches, it becomes extremely difficult to be carrying around these instruments. That's when cadaver detection dogs play a crucial role. These are specialized dogs that are capable of detecting decomposition odor. To bring them up to their capability, cadaver detection dogs are constantly trained on various training aids. The problem is we're not sure of the compounds that are evolved from these training aids and the compounds that cadaver detection dogs identify as decomposition related. This is where analysis by instrumentation can help us because we can potentially understand the compounds that are evolved from training aids and those that cadaver detection dog identify as decomposition related. The training aids used to train cadaver detection dog can be both natural or synthetic in nature. There are issues associated with both these types of training aids, such as with natural training aids, including human tissue, porcine tissue, blood, decomposition fluid, grave soil, clothing or bone, we're not sure if they are an ideal representation of decomposition order of an entire cadaver. We're not sure of how long the decomposition order lasts on these training aids, or even if there's any change that occurs over a period of time because of the various storage conditions. With synthetic training aids, studies have shown that these chemical formulations are not an ideal representation of decomposition order of cadavers, and thus their use is limited. An alternate to natural training aids is the use of amputated limbs. Ontario Provincial Police or OPP has been able to establish a program where they obtain amputated limbs from diabetic patients undergoing surgery at Kingston General Hospital. These limbs are collected and dissected by the Queen's University and then sent to OPP to be used for a cadaver detection dog training program. Amputated limbs, which would otherwise be discarded, can actually be put to use by the law enforcement agencies. In addition to these limbs, they also use other sources of natural training aids, such as teeth and blood, with an aim to incorporate varying decomposition order sources. All of this now brings me to the aims of my project. My project aims to analyze the compounds that are evolved from these training aids it aims to study any change that occurs over a period of time in the odor profile of these training aids and potentially validating or disregarding the use of amputated limbs as training aids. Design and data analysis for sample collection. Since volatile organic compounds or VOCs had to be collected from air, the first step was to accumulate the odor above the decomposing remain. This was achieved by placing an aluminium hood above the decomposing remain for 10 minutes and then collecting 500 ml of air sample on a 10x TA Carbograph 5 TB sorbent tube using a low flow pump. The tubes were taken back to the laboratory for analysis. 
A thermal desorption unit, unity 100XR by Marx, was used to desorb the tubes at 300 degrees Celsius. For analysis, Vico Pegasus BT40 GCGC TOF MS was used. The separation was carried out at a ramp of 5 degrees Celsius per minute and the acquisition was carried out at 200 spectra per second. The results that I've presented today were analyzed using the beta version of Chromatoff type software. Apart from VOC analysis, as a part of this project, I'm also required to undertake dog observations to record their response in the presence of training aids. This part of the study was conducted at the Ontario Provincial Police Canine Facility in Ontario. Results in discussion. OBB training aids VOC profile. Amongst all of the sample types that were analyzed for teeth, 9 of 51 volatile organic compounds were found associated with the teeth. However, none of these nine compounds have been previously reported in literature as decomposition related. The absence of any decomposition related compound could be attributed to the fact that there were no more soft tissue that was present around the teeth and hence no decomposition related VOCs were being evolved from this teeth sample. Apart from results from our analysis, the dog handlers also reported that their dogs did not show an indication of presence of decomposition odor when teeth was being used as a training aid. Considering this, it was concluded that this set of teeth was not an ideal sample to be used for training cadaver detection dogs. For the blood sample that we analyzed, we found some compounds that were related to decomposition present. The amputated limbs that were analyzed have been classified as foot, bone and tissue. The foot samples are just limbs that actually had both bone and tissue present in them. The results of these have been discussed in the next slide. The class abundance of amputated limbs used as training aids. The graph here shows that the class abundance of foot samples was slightly higher than that of bone and tissue samples. This graph also shows that the samples that were obtained in the year 2017 had a slightly higher class abundance compared to the samples that were obtained in the year 2019 and 2020. Now this could just be because the 2017 samples had been lying at the OPP for much longer time and they had degraded a lot more compared to the 2019 and the 2020 samples. Coming to the results of dog trials. We had two dogs that were available for the trial that was conducted, both of which showed a 90% above accuracy for presence of decomposition odor when OPP training aids were being used. One of the dogs did show an incorrect response to a sample that was buried under the surface of earth. Now this could just be because there wasn't enough volatile organic compound concentration at the level of surface of earth for the dog to be able to pick it up and identify it as decomposition related. This is something we could not verify with the second team because they were completely absent from the outdoor trial. All of their responses are based on the indoor trial that they were actually present for. Now, when we analyzed this buried sample, we did find some compounds that were decomposition related and present at this site. However, we're not sure if those are the compounds that the dogs actually identify as decomposition related compounds. To quickly summarize, the teeth samples that the OPP had was not deemed suited for further training and eventually discarded. The older training aids, which was the amputated limbs obtained in the year 2017, had a slightly higher class abundance compared to the amputated limbs obtained in 2019 and 2020. Generally, cadaver detection dogs showed a higher response accuracy to amputated limbs when used as training aids. This could potentially indicate that the cadaver detection dogs do identify as some compounds decomposition related that are evolved from amputated limbs. I would like to acknowledge everybody that's been a part of this project, the OPP, Queen's University, Kingston General Hospital, everybody on my research team and my family and friends. I would also like to acknowledge all of the funding and other agencies associated with this project. Thank you.